What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today we will continue with our Bhagavad Gita discussion. We started till the 36th verse from the first chapter and now we will continue with 37, 38, 39 and 40. Today we will discuss till 40. And before I begin as I say God is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there. And if you are new to the channel and you have not subscribed to it yet then Please subscribe to it somewhere here below. <laughs> and if you want a personal consultation with me, then please approach me in my website below in the link. And let us begin with the invocation to the preceptors who have bestowed their divine knowledge unto us. Omagyan timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri guru ve namaha. So till now what did we discuss? We discussed that Arjuna has undergone a severe paralysis because of his attachment and his Gandiva, his most pristine bow is slipping from his hand and he, his voice is choked up and he's telling I don't want to fight and he's telling to Lord Krishna sin will overcome us if we kill such people and what's the use of the kingdom if there's nobody living, right? So he's Arguments seem to be very valid. And this was there till the 36th verse where he said, How could we be happy by killing our own people? Alright, so now we will see what Arjuna says. 37th verse onwards. So 37, 38 are together here. So the recitation is as follows. Yadi api eta na pashyanti lopa pabhata cheta saha kulakshaya kritam dosham do you understand the meaning of this? Mitra drohe chapatakam pataka is great sin. Katham na gyanam asamabhi papad asama nivartitum kulakshaya kritam dosham prapasya bhir janardana. Again, he is using different words to address Lord Krishna here. So, the uh, uh, translation for these two verses are. O Janardhana. Janardhana is referred to Lord Krishna himself. Jana means people and Aradhana means to worship. So Lord Krishna is one who is worshipped by everybody. O Janardhana. Although these men, their hearts overtaken by greed. Who are these men? He is referring to Duryodhana basically. Although these men, their hearts overtaken by greed. See no fault in killing one's family or quarreling with friends. So indirectly he is admitting that my enemies do not see any fault in killing me or the king's men or, uh, or quarreling with friends. Why should we who can see the crime in destroying a family engage in these acts of sin? So basically he is indirectly hinting that my enemies are not paying heed to the fact that there will be this fratricidal war and everybody will be killed. But why should I also behave like that? Because I can see that this will be an act of sin. This will be pap. And nobody will be living here. So if I behave like my enemy, what's the difference between them and me, right? The purport is as follows. A Kshatriya is not supposed to refuse to battle or gamble when he is invited by some rival party. So Kshatriyas cannot refuse two things. Fighting, battles and gambling. When invited by some rival party, means when some enemy challenges you in these two. Under such an obligation, Arjuna could not refuse to fight because he had been challenged by the party of Duryodhana. So basically it's said here that because Arjuna was a Kshatriya and Kshatriyas do not uh, refuse to fight. That is why out of this obligation he came to the war. <laughs> not that he wanted to come and kill everybody. In this connection, Arjuna considered that the other party might be blind to the effects of such a challenge. Arjuna, however, could not, could see the evil consequences and could not accept the challenge. So basically, Arjuna is telling here that the enemy is blind, but I am not blind. They may not be able to see all this nonsense, but I can see it very clearly, distinctly, that everybody will perish. Arjuna, however, could see the evil consequences and could not accept the challenge. Obligation is actually binding when the effect is good, but when the effect is otherwise, then no one 
can be bound. Considering all the pros and cons, Arjuna decided not to fight. So this obligation which he is facing, he is feeling that this will not bring any good to me. This so-called obligation of not rejecting to fight. All right. So he is telling better I not fight in this. So now we will go to the 39th verse. Kulakshaya pranashyanti kula dharma sanatana. Dharme naste kulam chitam adharmo bhivitav toha. The translation is as follows. With the destruction of the dynasty, the eternal family tradition is vanquished. And thus the rest of the family becomes involved in a religion. So he is very concerned that if I destroy the family structure, there will be mayhem in the family tradition. All right. There will be people who will be doing things which are not permissible as per the scriptural injunctions because they will not bring good to the society and the family and the country and the world in general. Purport. In the system of the Varnashrama institution, there are many principles of religious traditions to help members of the family grow properly and attain spiritual values. So, Varnashrama system basically is referring to Varna and Ashrama. What is the Varna? See, there are two things. One is Varna and Ashrama. Ashrama refers to the importance of our spiritual well-being. All right. Ashrama is to advance spiritually and Varana means to be engaged properly as per our material inclinations. So what is Varana here? Varana means, Varana doesn't mean caste. That's a very perverted uh, translation of the word Varana. Varana means to engage ourselves as per our own default propensities. And there are four Varanas as we know and four Ashramas. What are the four Ashramas? We have the Brahmachari Ashram, which is to be a celibate till you get married. And then we have the Grihastha Ashram, where we get married and lead a very God-conscious life, which doesn't happen, unfortunately, today. People, after getting married, they completely neglect God and spiritual principles. And that is why people are so much miserable these days. Yes, householders, most of them, as I know, even in my family and so many people as I see around. And then after a certain age, when... You are done. Then we go to the forest, which is the Vanaprastha Ashram, the third ashram. Going to the forest in Kali Yuga is not possible, but it simply means that after certain age, 50, 55, you stop working for money and you, along with your wife, you go and preach spiritual knowledge, all right? And then uh, you attain enlightenment like that. But Vanaprastha doesn't mean you renounce your husband or you your wife you are still with your opposite sex you are still with your part partner all right but the difference between grihastha and vanaprastha is uh, the there's no physical union the couple doesn't unite physically when they are in a vanaprastha ashram and then the fourth ashrama is the order of sannyas where the person leaves his spouse and then the person goes to preach spiritual knowledge and there are different kinds of sannyas also kutichak bahulak parivaraja kacharya and paramhamsa these four orders of sannyas is also prevalent we will go to the four orders of sannyas some other time not today and then we have the varna varna refers to caste right no no no, no. it's not caste we have the brahmanas the chatriyas the vaishyas and the shudras brahmanas are the intellectual class all right they read the scriptures Pujan, Pajan, Pathan, Pathan, Yajan, Yajan. These six are the traits of, uh, not traits, these six are the qualities of Brahmins. Means these are duties, not even qualities, I would say. Duties means they should read the scriptures, teach others the scriptures. They should do Yajna and they should, uh, they should do Yajna in their own house and go and do Yajna for others also. They should accept charity and give charity. They should do puja and they should uh, in their own house and do it in others' house also. These are qualities of Brahmins, spiritual knowledge. to their, That's their duty to bestow spiritual knowledge to others and to themselves also. Then we have the Kshatriyas. Their duty is to rule and ensure that there is a overall order pertaining in the society as per the scriptural injunctions. And then there are the Vaishyas. Vaishyas are the merchants, the working class, the 
money people <laughs> and then we have the sudras who are the fourth uh, in the varna system they are the ones who help the other three classes in menial works like menial service and cleaning like and so many other things which the other three classes uh cannot do because they are engaged in much higher activities all right so that's the system of varna ashrama so varna is for the body and ashrama is for your spiritual well being so in this system of varna ashrama institution there are many principles of religious traditions to help members of the family grow properly and attain spiritual progress so everybody is engaged as per the varna ashrama system in the vedic culture we have the example of uh, rishabdev in the shrimad bhagavatam who had 100 sons and most of them uh, took to the family order all right to the grihastha ashram and 19 of them i guess took to the renounced order and this is how it happens just because you are the son of a chatriya rishabdev was the king it doesn't mean that you also have to your son also have to be a royal person all right he or he can also be a renunciate he can also go and preach spiritual knowledge all right and then there are so many other examples also of people who are born in a particular family and then they are engaged in other acts depending on their own nature and we also have the example of uh, king anga who had this son vena this vena although he was a son of a king but his behavior was like a shudra he was he was very uh, fallen and he was very merciless and then le- later on the brahmins had to chant a mantra and kill this vena all right and even in the mahabharat we have examples the son son of dronacharya was ashwatthama who used to rule although he was a brahmin he was a ruler the elder members are responsible for such purifying processes in the family beginning from birth to death there are 16 different samskaras which are performed and there is garbhadan samskar which is performed while the child is in the womb of the uh, sorry before uh, a couple decides to unite to have a child so that's the beginning uh, when garbhadan samskar is performed before a couple plans to unite then it is said a good progeny is uh, welcome there in the womb so that the progeny can become spiritually elevated all right and then they can help the family also but these days people will not do garbhadan samskar that is why uh, people it is becoming difficult for people to get children who are spiritually interested and then we have annaprasan samskar and then the last samskar is known as the antim samskar when the funeral rites are performed so all these 16 samskaras are very important for the children to be performed all right from the birth before the birth also <laughs> and the elder members are responsible for such purifying processes in the family so it is the duty of the elders to ensure that these processes are performed we will discuss on the 16 samskaras some other time but on the death of the elder members such family traditions of purification may stop that is the concern of arjuna and the remaining younger family members may develop irreligious habits and thereby lose their chance for spiritual salvation therefore for no purpose should the elder members of the family be slain all right so that means arjuna is telling it is the duty of the elders to ensure that these rituals are performed but if they are themselves not there who will make sure that these traditions continue and if these traditions don't continue their uh s- overall spiritual and material well-being will not be uh, satisfied and by that they will indulge in irreli- irreligious acts they will indulge in sinful acts which will bring uh pain suffering and misery to their own lives so arjuna is basically telling that it is very important that these great personalities elders like drona bhishma all of these personalities they should stay <laughs> otherwise <laughs> who will ensure that the tradition of the family is continued who will ensure that this uh, varnashram system is in order all right so arjuna's concerns are very genuine here but lord krishna will smash all of these <laughs> so wait till lord krishna comes into the picture it's not over arjuna is going to give more arguments we will see it later all right 
that is it from my side if you are new to the channel and you have not subscribed to it yet then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with other people who are interested in learning the gita and improving their lives all right and if you want a consultation from me then approach me in my website below with a license all right until next time with another video from the gita wish you good luck bye bye see you